I'm Natalie from Namaste Farms and I'm going to show you some Pagora fiber today. Pagora comes from goats and Pagora is actually a crossbred goat. It's a cross between a pygmy and an angora goat. And the thing that makes it really awesome is that their fleeces don't coarsen with age like an angora goat's does. They also have different um, fleece types. There's the B, the A, and the C. And a C is like cashmere. I breed for the A type fleece, which means I don't have to have it processed and I can spin straight from the lock. So this is the only um, pagora that I have right now that I'm gonna be making yarn out of for Yarn Market next week. And Deborah has a pattern and I think it's for a cowl and it's extremely nice. It's like knit on the diagonal. So I'm gonna spin this all probably today and then I'm gonna have the shipment out to her tomorrow and um, she's gonna offer it for sale next week. What I wanted to do though is I wanted to show you what it looked like on the dry rack. It's like, I mean, the softest, fluffiest clouds. And then I wanted to show you the actual animals that it came from. Um, furthermore, I wanted to show you um, me spinning some, so hang on just a second. Okay, so I'm out here and I want to show you how I spin this pagora. And actually, this stuff that's on the bobbin will probably be one of the skeins that for, is for sale at Yarn Market. Um, I normally don't spin in the hideous California heat, but um, I wanted to show you out here where the lighting was really good. And I normally also don't use this wheel, but this wheel is really, really, really fast. And that's Roni, my three-year-old. And he's naked, so I'm sure you're going to see him in a few minutes. <laughs> okay, so this is exactly what I do. This is how I spin the yarn. This one has this little piece of gold thread in it. You can see I'm spinning this fiber onto it. And I purposefully leave these like little curlicues and little tiny bunches just because I want the yarn to have texture. If I didn't want texture in my yarn, then I would buy um, commercial yarn, or I'd suggest you buy commercial yarn. Hand spun yarn, the beauty of it is that you can have texture. I love to have little bumps here and there and curlicues. I just try not to make a huge diameter difference because then it makes it hard to knit. You'll end up having holes if you have a bunch of places with hardly any fiber and then, you know, one or two really thick places. You want to, you know, sort of spread it out evenly. And here I have these pieces of vegetable matter, like vegetable matter means straw or hay, and I just pick them out. In commercial um, yarns and fibers, the vegetable matter is burnt out with chemicals during the um, processing. And so a lot of people are very allergic to um, the chemicals that are used in yarns, and they think that they're allergic to wool, and they're really not. It's the chemicals that are used to process the wool. And that's why you normally won't find vegetable matter in commercial wools. It's all been burnt out. But me, I just wash all of my raw fleeces in Dawn. Okay, so this is how I do it. It's, you know, pretty, I mean, I just grab it off the table, essentially, and pull it apart, and then just start spinning it. And almost all my yarns, this is exactly the process that I do, right here. Except they don't all have this um, metallic core. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to show you what it looks like when I'm finished. This is what it'll look like. And it has all these gorgeous little pieces, these little ringlets. And I do that on purpose. And then what I'll do is I will fluff it up. Like I'll take a brush, like a boar bristle brush, and I will kind of fluff these hairs up a little bit and then you'll have a beautiful skein of yarn. So I'm gonna take you out and I'm gonna show you the animals that this fleece came from. Okay, hi. So these two little gentlemen, they look really funny because they don't have their fleece on, but one's right there and another one is right there. And they were shorn yesterday. And those are where all the pagora fiber on that table came from. In a second, I'm gonna take you over and I'm gonna show you one with fleece so that you don't think they all look bare like that. Okay, here's a yearling, and she's in full fleece, and she's ready to be shorn. And you can see her locks are a little open, but her fleece is so soft. She's wet right now because she got hit by the sprinklers. But when it dries, her curls will get a little bit tighter. Okay, so we just saw the Pagora yearling outside with the fleece on, and now I wanna show you, because I'm really proud, of this scarf that I made from the pattern that's on Yarn Market. And it's the exact same pattern except for I, I actually did change it. So I guess it's not exactly exact, but I didn't I didn't really change the pattern. I just changed the needle size and then didn't use like a fingering weight or whatever they I don't even know what that means, but it's like some fit she like knit my Pagora yarn with some thin type thread or something together, like they knit as one. I didn't do that. I just solely used my Pagora, except I didn't really solely use my Pagora. I also used a little bit of my um, Ecru Scully that's mohair and just 
I know you can't see probably from there, but there are a few little skulls in here. And like I knit, I want to only say like maybe four yards, like four yards of scully. And then it took about a skein and a half with a size eight needle of the Pagora. And then my favorite thing, because I'm really into fringe, I think it's extremely chic. I, I put fringe. I put Wednesday Dale fringe. And this is called Long Locks, and um, Yarn Market's going to have this too. And so the thing that's really neat about this Wensley Dale, first of all, it's extremely hard to make this yarn because um, I'm going to put this down and show you. I have to take this fleece that's this clean, and then when I, when I spin it, I have to pull these locks apart, like end to end, like that. So I spin them into yarn like that. And so I'm constantly having to split them. And um, some of them are, well, I'd say it's like from between 8 and 12 inches long. And it just takes a lot of time. For one skein, for one 40-yard skein, it could take me an hour and a half to do. So, but that said, it's so beautiful that I don't actually even mind making it. And then as it gets um, washed, like I washed this scarf, and I love it. Um, but the fringe, look at the fringe. When it washes, it kind of opens up a little bit. And it just gets really full and beautiful. And so I love it. Fringe is like one of my favorite things, and I just think no scarf is complete, or cowl. I don't even know what the difference is. They call it a cowl pattern, but I'll show you. So I put mine, and I wear it, and it's knit on the diagonal, and I've never knit on the diagonal before, and I know that that's probably really remedial for some of you, but for me, I was like all proud of myself. Like I'm knitting on the diagonal. Okay, so here, see? Oh, she, wait. My hair always gets in the way. Some of my stuff actually has my hair knitted or spun in it, which I'm like, sure you're like, wow, that's great. <laughs> but seriously, my hair gets in the way. But this is what it looks like. So anyway, you can find this yarn at yarnmarket.com, and you can also find the pattern at yarnmarket.com, and then you can um, email me for any questions at little e at mac.com. Thank you so much, and happy knitting.